everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. And today we're taking a look at a flip and write game called Next Station London, which is not even the only one of these that exists because Metro X is another flip and write game about subways. This is fair, another yeah. one. But uh, yet another one. Okay, review done. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I, I will say when I saw it, I was like, huh. Have I already played this? Yeah, you know, there's a bit of that. And also, the roll and write slash flip and write genre is pretty crowded. Yeah. Uh, this one, though, did something unique that intrigued me, was that you're drawing your subway out, but you have a colored pencil. And I was like, ooh, what color will I be? In fact, my kids were like, I want to be pink. And I was like, well, the rules say you are pink for this turn. Then you give me the pink pencil. You're just drawing each line once. Mm -hmm. um, I'll show you. Here's the setup for Next Station London. Each player is given a piece of paper that represents the metro lines of the four different colors of lines that they're going to be drawing on this map. Uh, they're also given a color pencil. So I, as the, this player here, will be drawing the blue line while simultaneously the other players will be drawing the purple, green, and pink lines, all determined by a flip of the cards. So at the start of the game, you flip over a card, and based on the symbol that you have, every player will start from their starting color station and draw a line. So for example, I'll go from here down to the triangle space because that was what was revealed. Whereas the purple player will be at the same time drawing from this to any one of the available triangle spaces nearby. Same thing with the green player, so on and so forth. But for from here on out, I'm just gonna kind of focus on my own player board because as you imagine, uh, other players will just be focusing on their own lines. So now after I've drawn to this triangle, once everyone is done, we flip over the next card. You see that this is a square. So I can continue the line, the train line, from either end of my route here. So I'll draw up to the square. Once everyone's done, you flip over the next card. You see that this is a wild symbol, so you can draw to any of the four symbols. So I'm going to draw over to this circle over there. When I go to one of these gear-shaped spaces, I'm going to cross off the uh, first available gear down here. I have now increased the number of endgame points from zero that I'll have to one. As you cross off more of these gear shapes, you can get up to 20, 25 points. Once everyone's done, we flip over the next card. This is slightly different. This is a deviation that you can kind of uh, branch off. Normally, you can only build uh, or continue on from either end of the line. But when you draw this card, you draw the next card as well. And this says, from anywhere in my path, I can branch off and go to, uh, in this case, a circle. Oh, I thought I stacked this deck better. Um, let's say, oh, no, no, it's circle. This works here. So this works for demonstration. I can, at this point, branch off from a midpoint and draw to a circle. So now I have three different endpoints that I can draw off of from here. So if I wanted to do this, I could, or I could continue from any of the different points. The round continues until every uh, until all of the all five of the pink station cards have been revealed. There are blue cards, and then there are the pink station cards. And once the fifth pink station card is drawn, that'll end the round. So even if there are any number of blue cards left, that's it. So once we've drawn across here and connected to different places, then we will score up points. The way that you score points for the end of the round is you'll get two points for every time that your route crossed the river, the River Thames going through the middle of town. So in this case, I'd score four points for this route. And then uh, here, you're going to multiply the number of different regions on the, uh, on the map that you've gone into. Regions are determined by the yellow lines here. So this route has gone to three different regions. And then you multiply that times the number, uh, the, the region in which you had the most stops at. So you can see in this region, I had four stops here. So I'm going to multiply uh, three different regions, whoop, four different regions times, or three different regions times four. So I'm going to get 12 points in there plus another bonus four. So I've scored 16 points for the round. At this point, everybody's going to pass their pencils to the left, reshuffle up the cards, and then play the next round while working on the next route. And you play four rounds doing the exact same thing, uh, the exact same process here, drawing and connecting routes. Now, uh, for endgame scoring, you're going to multiply the four different routes that you've done here with all their points. You're going to then also get bonus points for connecting multiple colored lines to the same stop. 
So in this case here, that is one uh, bonus of two points. If you were able to get multiple lines that all wound up at the same stop like that, three different color lines at the same place, those would be five points each. And if you could manage to get four all in the same stop, that'll be nine points each. You then sum up these points down here on the bottom, however many of these you were able to cross off uh, of those gear stations that you went to, and that'll be your final points in the basic version of the game. There are two advanced versions that you can play, wherein you randomize two of these cards here, and these are objectives that everyone will be going for. If you can, for example, get, uh, get to all nine stops in the central quadrant, and if you can cross the River Thames six times, you'll earn 10 bonus points as indicated over here. One other small module you can play with are called the pencil powers. So when you are working on a particular line, you're dealt one of the four pencil powers, something that says, hey, one card you can make a wild space, uh, any space of you uh, as you want, you can spend this once per round. Then when you pass the pencils along and you get the new pencil, you get the player power that that pencil is associated with. In this case, you can use that branching action at any point, or you can increase a multiplier, or you can connect to two uh, stations of the, same, uh, of the same symbol on the same turn. So there's just four of those pencil powers. There's a few of these different objectives you can play for. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. So because of the way the game plays out, this is a one to four player game. I've been sitting and thinking about it for a while. I'm not convinced there's any, you could play one to a thousand, I suppose, if you had enough. If, if you had enough colored pencils. Yeah, if just colored pencils. But what we do doesn't affect each other at all. No, not no. at all. It so it's more of a, we're all playing a puzzle simultaneously. And that's fine, there's a lot of rolling rights that are like that, but I wanna be clear, it's not like, I did this so you can't, I took a spot, you know, and then there's several rolling rights that do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a good solo one to play, because you can just sit there and draw the cards and see what happens. But I prefer playing with other people, mostly because I like to hear the moans or joy of the, of the spot. On. I played with someone, it was so funny, there's a group of us, and uh, and every card flip goes, just what I needed, and draw a line. Flip over the next card, just what I needed. And I'm sitting there like, I'm struggling a little bit, okay? <laughs> Did you get a better score? Uh, I don't remember, but it was, that was the memorable part. Triangle, just what I needed. Well, you know what? Oh that, there is an argument to be made that you're not, I, I said you're playing the same puzzle, you're not, though. Because, because you're, you're starting at green and I'm starting at pink with the same sets of cards. So I guess you could make an argument that someone has an advantage. And there's different player powers and when those happen to be like the perfect situation that you need it. I, like I, I get to double on my pink track, but you get to double on your blue track or I don't know, something like that. What I like about that part, you're working on the purple track, I'm working on pink when he's starting with green is your metro map at the end of the game will just look different from each other's. I know it doesn't really make an, a functional in-game difference, so to speak, but I like the fact that we're not all drawing the same route. Triangle got flipped, all of us are drawing from here to this triangle, right? Got it. You know what I mean? It, it makes each of us, in the end, just look different. And if, even if that's just a small psychological touch, I like it. It makes me charmed more by this game. How do you feel about the pink cards versus the blue cards? So the game, each round is triggered, the end is triggered by the pink cards, and so you may or may not see all the cards for each station. It's it's almost the same as just rolling a die in the last three cards. I mean, yes, there's a small chance that the first six cards or whatever are pink cards, and the game could end it fast, but it's functionally, mathematically, a, a tiny improbability. That but it's happen. happened to me. Oh, it has? It has. I've seen five pink cards in a row and went, oh, that was a short that round. A short My round. green train did nothing. <laughs> sure, but okay, so, but I still, it's it's more of a just variable ending. That's all it is. Yeah. That does not bother me because I don't want, I like there to be a little bit of uncertainty. I like that little bit of tension where I'm like, this could be it. You know, I think that's interesting. I think it helps so that you can't, like, predetermine a lot of your route. You can't be like, That's well, true. the odds are that I'm going to get X, Y, Z cards in the last three. Well, I don't. I definitely go. Where can I go now? I think. <laughs> I think this one move. I never think far. I mean, I, I do think like I should not trap myself to where I can't move. 
Sure. And oh, I, see, I think I had like once we're about halfway through the cards, I start thinking like, oh, all the squares are out. I can't depend oh, on any word. more squares. Oh my word! Yeah, I'm not there. Like, oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. I'm like, I can't wait for a square to come out and no squares come out. I'm like, oh. Oh, they're both There's out already. Oops. Left. Well, okay. That's uh, maybe <laughs> I should put more thought into it because I do count cards in trick-taking games. What did you think of the scoring? The scoring is slightly tricky to explain to people the it is, first time. And the yellow boxes are kind of hard to see. Like, I wish that they had a different color that distinguished, especially those corners. Because I hadn't played it in a while, and then I replayed it just this last week, and I was teaching someone, and I, like, partway through the first round, I was like, oh, yeah, there's extra boxes in the corner. Like, they're kind of hard to see. They're there just for... You hitting another... It's a multiplier. Another sector, sector, yeah. But it's important to know that that's an extra multiplier. Yeah. I just... Like, if you say I'm going to go for sectors and I'm going to try to connect the most, cross off the most things, I don't know that they're that different. That This, to me, is the weakest part of the game was the scoring. I thought it was fine. I didn't find it exciting. It was more interesting as I drew out the thing. The only one I was excited about is I'm like, I will right, we'll try to make a station have all four come out of it, which I still have not pulled off yet. I did once. I did ah, three, and it felt so good. I did three. I have yeah, not done three's... four. So there's there's the bonus scorings, which are optional modules you can play with. It's a blue orange game, so I think most people watching the dice tag will probably play with those extra modules. I like the multiplication scoring a lot. I do I think it's a little bit tricky to explain, but I like the the mix between concentrating in one zone but then also trying to reach lots of different zones. I think that the way that it's laid out on the sheet is a little bit weird because then you also add the number of times you cross the river. But overall, I, I really like that scoring. I find it very uh, charming and it makes it a little bit thinkier than just drawing a cool route. But you can also play this game just drawing cool routes and you have you know a good amount of fun with it still. I appreciate the like end game scoring bonuses. Mm. Like if you've filled up every single, like if some route has touched every single square in the middle, you know, depending between all your routes. There's a little bonus. Um, the only one that's weird to me is crossing the river like seven or nine times. Like I just cannot comprehend how that's even possible. Oh, I do that a lot. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Well, Chris is a river crosser machine. I wish there was more than one board. I do wish there were more maps. Like even if it's just one on the other side. I was just checking because I was like, I think there was only one board, and there only is one board. Yes. Seems like it wouldn't have been that hard to make a second board for it. Maybe, but I'm also impressed, like the the mathematics behind this, so that each spot has a decent amount of other options that lead out from it. It feels so free form the first few times you play it, and that's what I think initially grabbed sure. me is that this felt like it was completely free form. After playing it, and I'll admit that I've played this about fifty times. Fifty. Fifty. Board game arena. Oh, he's you had can play like it all... constant games going with friends. Yeah, but also I've played the physical version quite a lot as well. Uh, you, as, as you play it more, you kind of see, okay, th this spot is limited by these other things. I've played this a lot. Uh, so I think that there's a solid bit of, uh, of, of planning behind each map, but I really do hope that there will be like expansion maps or something, or just alternate maps, because that would be really fun to kind of break it up. <laughs> Maybe. I have not played it 50 <laughs> times. I think I will do my final thoughts before Chris then. Um, <laughs> I'm giving this a seven and a half. I like it a lot. I think it is, I, I tend to like flip and write better than roll and write, I'm finding. I think um, so, yeah. Because I can count down a deck, and I'm fascinated. Except that you don't, but you can, yes. You know, I don't want. So you said you didn't count down the deck. Well, yeah, you can. Um, but I, well, I like that that aspect of I don't know when the game's going to end. I guess that could happen in a roll, right? Anyway, okay. I really like the four different subway lines. I think that's fun because I'd be like, oh, I didn't do very well with my pink line. But now the green line. Come on, it's time to make it work well. And so it feels like there's some almost, if you didn't do well on one line, you can hopefully catch up on the other lines. Maybe, although someone who just keeps saying, oh, that was good for me, <laughs> you know, maybe they'll beat you. <laughs> but I think it's interesting, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, 7.5. Okay, I'm also going to give it a 7.5. Um, I think that it is a thoroughly fun roll and write game. I also feel like there's tons of roll and write games out there, and I don't know if this makes a bigger splash than a lot of other ones, um, except that it is very clean and simple. And I think that that is something that I appreciate about it. Um, there's not a lot of math going into it. There's not a lot of prep going into it. It's literally shuffle the cards, deal out player powers if you want to deal out player powers, get a pencil and go. So I appreciate how, how simple, how small of a box it is. 
small of a box it is. Um, and I think that it's fun. I, I like that you said it's very open, free form feeling at the beginning, and then you make your own tightness as you go, and you're like, oh, am I gonna get it in the right order to get, you know, the, to, to finish those end game scorings that I'm hoping for? So I think that there's some really good moments in it, um, so I'm giving it a 7.5. I'm gonna be the uh, the Tom Vassell classic outlier here, uh, because I'm giving this a nine. Whoa! I I believe whoa. it. With yeah. How much he plays this? I love this. I believe one, it now. This, this one captivated me for sure. Uh, that free form open nature. I love the fact that the subway lines connect, and you get bonuses for connecting subway lines. Right? If you're pink and your green route, go to the same stops. You get bonus points for that. That four way bonus. I've I've, I've done it once in fifty something games. But it felt so cool to get it. I like mixing up the objectives. Did you win that game? I, I did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, but I did it. No, it's 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 really really charming. Um, I'm like I said, I was captivated by the idea that each of us rotates the pencils each round. Small little thing, but it just kind of keeps me engaged. Have you played it solo? I've played it also a lot solo. Do you I like mean, it better with other people or solo, or does it not matter? I almost feel like they're kind of the same, but with, with the other people, you have that fun moment of, of everyone moaning and groaning together. But this, you can play this very fast solo, 10, 15 minutes or so. You just draw out the routes, uh, shuffle up the deck, and, and change pencil to go to the next one. I like it. I would love to see more content for it, but, um, but even as is. Just this box, I think it's well worth the purchase. It feels like no other roll and write, flip and write game out there. Well, since someone will probably ask, since I mentioned Metrox at the beginning, I like them both. I think this one's easier to teach than Metrox. Metrox explaining that one is a really pain in the neck. Um, I, I don't know if you played that I'm one. Not, no. Yeah, it's a, it's a little trickier to explain because of how far you can move them. This one's easier, and I think they kind of give the same experience. But anyway, that's Next Station London. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. Insert riding subway joke here. <laughs>